Hey, what's up everybody? What you guys all doing? So I uh, had a nice live show. If you didn't see the live show, I talked with Philly Cable Dave and we talked about the ZDU boxes and had a little debate, uh, you know, talking about some pros and cons on those boxes. Feel free to check that out and uh, check out his channel, check out my channel, check out all kinds of new stuff that's going to be coming out. What I want to talk to you today about though is uh, something that basically uh, people talk about a lot, uh, Cody. Uh, but I'm going to talk to it talk to you about the real Cody, what Cody was meant to be, which was a media center, which is basically what the ZDU boxes are doing. They give you a nice, shiny interface. Uh, the ZDU box was uh, originally, its its media center was Cody. It was a fork of Cody, the ZDU uh, media center uh, originally. And then they uh, did, op they did uh, change it around. Uh, it's still kind of Cody at the core, but they've changed it to mostly their, their um, their thing it goes out and gets from the international movie database all of its information for your movies and everything but uh if you just put cody on any box you can do pretty much the same thing if you're just wanting to add your content if it's all about having a media center playing your music playing your playing in, in a nice pretty interface and let's face it there's a lot of videos showing how you can change cody's look all that kind of stuff um so i am uh you know, this is for people who have created their own uh, library of their content that they own. Uh, we're not talking about anything as far as, you know, any, you know, unofficial add-ons or any ways to get uh, anything illegal at all. We're not talking about that. This is uh, using Cody in a legal sense for you to use it for your personal content, your music, your movies, etc. Let's go ahead and go into Cody and take a look. Now, when you get Cody, uh, first thing you're going to see is right here. Uh, your library is currently empty. In order to populate it with personal media, enter the file section and add media sources. Straightforward, you get this the first thing. I don't know how much easier it can be. It's telling you enter file section right here, a button for you just to add your files to, to Cody. So we're going to do this, right? We're going to enter the file section. We're going to uh, go to files and add videos. So we're going to add some videos. First of all, it says add video source. It wants to know where the videos are. Now, first of all, are they on a hard drive that you own that's plugged into the USB port, or are they on your network on a NAS, uh, or are they uh, somewhere else, even on the internet, right? Let's go ahead and hit Browse, and first of all, we're going to see we've got all of the drives. So if my movies were on my C drive, my E drive here, I could go into any of these drives. These would be a drive you plugged into your USB port. Uh, these can be all sorts of other drives uh, that are on your system. As we scroll down, we've got network file system. We got SMB. Uh, there's my Homeplex server, which I did add already. Uh, so you can add network locations. Now I want to go down to the bottom here and I really want to show you uh, where you can actually add a network location. Now this is really cool. When you add the network location, it's really simple here. There's a bunch of them. So say you've got a website that's got a bunch of movies. You can even add a web server directory, HTTP, which is the, uh, you know, what they use for websites, HTTPS, web dev. You can add an FTP server. And I want you to notice these FTP servers can be username and password. So you could add a, you could have your own FTP server like I've shown in my past videos. You can have it set up so it's username and password protected. And then you put the server address in from the internet and you can remotely access all your content from that server, all of your movies and music and et cetera from that FTP server. So you could do that also from your FTP server. If you wanted to set an FTP server up with a hard drive that's plugged into your router, like I showed in a previous live show, you can plug a hard drive into your router. You can set up uh, DDNS. You can give, even give it a, you can give it a, a, a web address and you can put that in here. And if, you're, if your FTP server uses a different port, you can put a different port number. 21 is the default port. If you're running multiple FTP servers off the same internet connection, you may be using a couple of different port numbers. Um, and then you've got your username and password if you have it protected. Uh, you know, this is a way you could even, uh, you know, actually, uh, you know, protect your content. That way you give the username and password out to your friends and family that you want to access it. And that way it's protected. Uh, so let's go ahead and look through the rest of the FTPS server, UPnP server, RSS feeds, um, network file system, 
Windows Network SMB. This is where you would go ahead and add your server name, and if you have it protected, you can you know add the login for that as well. You would add the server name here uh, for the server web server directory. Uh, again, so this is where you add all you could add your stuff. I'm going to go to my home Plex server, which has all my drives. Here's all kinds of stuff on here, tons and tons of stuff, because this also also is where my FTP server is coming from. So we're going to go into here and I'm going to go to the movies section just because I'm going to add one just one folder. So we're going to go ahead and add uh, we're going to go to movies and I'm just going to add one year because that's going to be enough. That's going to be a pretty good chunk of movies. I'm just going to add a random year. Let's just add 2014. And I'm going to hit okay so I have all my movies this is just the way I like to organize them I organize my movies by year some people like to do them alphabetically some people like to do them uh, by genre it, nothing that neither of those ways is wrong or right this is just the way I like to do mine uh, so I I go by year um, and then I hit okay and then I'm going to I'm going to be adding that year directory contains now this is where you say directory contains what so the directory contains movies. That's the way it's going to get from the movie database. It's going to get its information. Or you can have it local information only. So if you don't want it to gather all of that information up from the movie database, you don't have to. You could just have it local information, and it'll just show you the names of the movies uh, that you've named them uh, in your directory. So say you have a bunch of home movies. You wouldn't want it to go to the movie database. You would want it to go to local information only, because home movies obviously aren't going to have movie database information. Uh, so you could watch home movies, uh, et cetera, um, on, your, uh, on, on your device as well. You could add those into your library, uh, have a separate library for that. Um, so you got settings here. You've got movies in separate folders that match the movie title. you got some obvious options here. Just, those just depend... Uh, those just depend on how you have your setup. So most of my movies are in separate folders that usually match the movie title. I'm going to check mark that. Uh, scan recursively and exclude path from library updates. You can do this uh, if you want to exclude it from updating the library uh, all the time. Uh, so you can exclude this path from that. But this is just one folder, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I did check mark that because most of my movies are in separate folders that are, you know, named the same as the movie title. Uh, there are some other settings here that you can go into so you can you know keep original title enable fan art enable landscape you can enable some different things now depending on the you know uh, fancy skin you may have in cody you can make it look any way you want obviously uh, you can enable trailers from youtube so you can actually watch your trailers as well uh, but i'm not really going to change anything here i just wanted to show you that real quick so we're going to go ahead and just hit OK. This is just like a basic start start point for you guys to be able to add your content. Do you want to refresh the information? Yes. So right now up at the top, it's actually adding the uh, movies using the movie database. So it's actually going through and it's getting it's reading all of these movies that are in this folder. And then once it's finished, we'll actually be able to see all of those. Now, depending on how many movies you've got, it may take some time to uh, to add the, the whole library. I don't know how many movies are in that 2014 folder, but um, definitely it, it will take a couple of minutes to go ahead and add the, uh, the movies. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video, and we'll come back when this is finished adding oh wait i think it did it, it well it finished already so i didn't know exactly how long it would take uh, but i didn't have to wait so we're going to go into there and now you can see that we've got here's all the movies from my 2014 folder uh, as we scroll down and some stuff is like here we go here's one that wasn't labeled correctly so it didn't quite bring it up um, correctly with the with the artwork there but if i scroll down um, we've got the ones that are labeled correctly brought up information properly from the TV database. But you have to have the names correct for it to really bring in all of the correct information. So those are that's something to be aware of when you get your when you work on your collection and you're getting movies from wherever you get them and however you end up getting them. But as you can see it's bringing up the movies and all of the information over here on the side and you can actually change the look so if I wanted if I didn't want it to be in list I could go to poster 
And so here's the poster view, regular poster view in Kodi. So you can actually change the view depending on how you want. And some, uh, some skins have way more view types. Here's a shift view, info wall view. So this is a common view a lot of people like. Uh, this is a view that's in a lot of your uh, a lot of your APKs looks similar to this. So this is a view a lot of you might enjoy because it's similar to what you're used to already. As you can see, very easy. If you have your content, uh, if you got a hard drive with a bunch of content on it, wherever you got that content from, um, the uh, you can add it very very quickly and easily into Kodi, and then it then it'll be in your library. So if I go back and I now I go to my movies section that content's available right here in my movies section. And if I had TV shows, I could add TV shows as well. So if I go here, I could add add videos and I could go again, uh, a really quick uh, demonstration on how to do that again is you go, well, not there, you uh, go to browse and then you go to the wherever the content is, whether it's on one of your drives that you have plugged into the USB port, you could do that really easy if the drive was just plugged directly in. It'll just show the drive up, select the drive, and have it add all the content. Um, the uh, I do recommend making sure your content is separated at least between your TV shows and your movies, so that you can because Cody uh, separates the TV shows and movies uh, into two different databases. But what you do here is you go to the I'm going into my Plex server where my stuff is. I've got TV. So I can go into the TV section. Uh, there's classic TV. I can go down here to TV. And I can just pick, you know, history is a small folder. I don't think there's that much stuff in there. So yeah, I'm just going to add this. And we're going to hit, I'm just showing you how to do this again. So I'm adding, enter the name for the media source, history, add. And it, whoops. Uh, don't need that. Hit OK. Okay, so now it's going to be uh, the directory contains, and now we're going to say, because it's not movies, right? We're gonna select TV shows. And also I want you to notice there was music, there was stuff for music there too. So if you have music videos, there's an option for music videos. So the movie database, uh, again, settings, uh, selected folders contain, contains a single TV show. Uh, I'm not gonna select any of that, exclude the path. I'm, I'm just gonna hit okay. It says, do you wanna refresh Yes, we need to refresh it because we just added it. So now it's again adding the from the movie database. Again, it's scanning the TV shows. And it's going to add these uh, particular TV shows from one section of my Plex into uh, into this uh, into here. So the uh, this isn't uh, this is without using the Plex. This is without using any Kodi add-ons at all. This is Kodi does this right out of the box. So just about any version of Kodi going way, way back would do this. Uh, so any old box you have, any old Android box you have uh, that has an old version of Kodi on it, you could literally open Kodi up and you can add your libraries and you can use it to watch your personal content if you wanted it to just be a, a straight, regular old media player. If you just want to play your media, your movies, your TV shows, etc., very very easy to do this and it's just finished it just finished adding my content so now i'm going to go back to the beginning here and now i'm going to go to tv shows and uh let's see right here tv shows and so here we go now i got recently added episodes we've got unwatched let's go over here so bam here's your stuff and it's really cool because you're going to have recently added in progress uh, you can view by genres as well uh, the interface is, is very nice, and you can add all your content from all your drives. Just add it right into Kodi, and, and you're, you're set. You're ready to go. So Kodi out of the box does this. This is what it was meant to be. It was meant to be a media player. A lot of people got lost along the way because of, of a lot of the third-party add-ons that are out there, and they turned it into more of a streaming, uh, a more of a streaming device, right, um, instead of a local media center device that can actually uh, take care of your all of your content on your drives. Um, so if you wanted to watch anything, you can go and just, you know, pick something to watch uh, like I have here. So, you know, um, and it and it brings all of the information up from the TV data and the movie database. So you get all your information pretty much the same place the all these other apps get their information. Hopefully this helps some of you out. 
uh, instead of buying a very expensive box that has a so-called media center software in it, just throw Cody on there. If this is what you want to do, if you've got a big hard drive and you or you purchase a drive with a bunch of content from, I don't know who, not judging, um, or if you build your library properly the way uh, the way you would people are supposed to, you actually go out and get your get you know pick and choose. Uh, sorry about that. My phone's making noise. If you go out and pick and choose your content, whatever you want to get, your movies you like and TV shows you like and build your collection, then you can watch it uh, like this. And if you have it on a network uh, like a mini PC, like I talked about in my live show last night, you can have those uh, that content available through your whole network in your home without being on the internet. So you don't need the internet. Uh, you don't need, all you need is your home network. And you can actually access all of the all of this content over your network from any box that runs Cody, and you don't have to have the content locally uh, on your box. Um, so hopefully that helps some of you out uh, in using Cody to make it a media center. I just showed you it was very quick, very easy. It doesn't take very long to add your content if your content's already on a drive, already on a uh, uh, you know a network location on your network. Very easy to add it. It's no problem at all. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put a content down below in the content section. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys all have a great day. Um, I just wanted to give some people options, show you how to use Cody, um, and even you know, even have Cody be a media center that you can access your content over the internet if you were, if you set up a if you set up a NAS or a mini PC to be a NAS and it's running your FTP or an HTTP server in your home that you're running out of your home internet. If your home internet is a good internet, like you have one gig up and down or you have a really fast internet, you can actually do that and you can remotely access all of that content uh, and access it, uh, you know, uh, and watch it uh, if you're out of town, away from your house. Uh, if you don't want to go through the trouble of setting up an actual Plex server, uh, you don't have to do that. You could, and there, there's tons of tutorials on how to set up and do uh, different types of HTTP and FTP servers. And you can set one of those up in your own home, uh, on your own mini PC or your own P regular PC. If you have an old PC, an old, an old, even an old dual core uh, PC laying around, you don't need anything super fast to do that. That can sit there and just be a file server because it's not doing anything else. It would actually run and be a file server just fine. Uh, the real work will be done on the device that's actually playing the content, as opposed to to Plex, which actually uh, is really nice because one of the differences in Plex, Plex actually takes advantage of the a lot of the encoding and a lot of the the playing from the server itself. So that's why you would want a little more powerful server that's got a GPU and some some speed and power behind it if you're setting up a Plex server. Uh, as opposed to just setting a straight FTP server up where you're just accessing the files because the 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 stick or the box is doing all the work to play the video. You just need a fast enough internet access to access the file at that point. Plex can operate on a lot slower connection because it uses a lot of the power of the server itself and uh, everything on the back end of Plex. So you're not bringing up, uh, for instance, in Kodi, when you when you're bringing in all of that content, uh, those all that artwork that comes in comes into Kodi. So if you're trying to do that on on say a Fire Stick or something, I don't recommend that because the Fire Sticks are a lower end device with not a lot of space. You really need a little bit more storage capacity to be able to handle that real well because it puts a lot of it locally uh, on the unit itself that's playing the device as opposed to Plex, which keeps it on the server. Um, so uh, those are some differences in those two different ways of doing that, just so you guys have an idea. I can explain some of that in more detail in some other videos, but this video was mostly just to get you guys going and get you started uh, with some of your own local content, just adding it with a USB stick or USB hard drive or, a, or, or whatever. Uh, directly into Cody for you to watch at home. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a thumbs up if you did. Uh, have a great day, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, um, and I'll hopefully show some really good stuff. See you soon. Bye.